Ice and the Element Band. They're not stop. All right. All right. Now, world. Together we stand. That is a serious, that is a boss tune from the bass line to the keyboard to the background vocals to the. Oh! Loved. Drummy? And Richie is sounding like, oh my gosh, goosebumps, honestly. More from Richie later. Um, but this theme from this song, I think, spills over to this interview because the song is called Together We Stand, and this is a result of a partnership. So science and research, two amazing things that go hand in hand. And today, through 3D printing prosthetics, we are going to witness that with professor and chairman in the Department of Rehabilitative Medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Dr. Matthew Bartels. This is at the Montefiore um, Medical Center in Bronx, New York. Director of Zion Care International, Camille Wilson, and physician and researcher, Dr. Vishal Chandel, also with us this morning. And I don't want to leave out Felix, because Felix is here with Robo, Felix Morris, and Robo. Good morning, Robo. I used to hear you him Robo, um, which you just fitted yesterday for the first time. Felix is an amputee and is benefiting this morning. So good morning to all of you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to start with the lady first, if that's okay, because um, I want to find out how this all came together and we came to be sitting here this morning. Tell me, Felix, well, Felix, we can talk about your story, but how did this partnership between your organization, Zion Care, and the Montefiore Hospital come about? Well, Zion Care is a non-for-profit, um, headquartered in New York, and also registered locally as a charity. So I am the director for Jamaica and Latin America, mm -hmm. and this is our seventh mission to Jamaica. Fantastic. Um, our chairman is Dr. Craig Brown. He is a Jamaican who migrated in the 90s, uh, past student of St. George's College. Oh, wow. Um, he's an educator and an investment banker and do a lot, a lot of work to, with the poor and needy in all over the world, and especially in Jamaica. So this is our seventh mission to, to, to Jamaica, and I think it's our third um, association with Montefiore. So they were here last year, yeah. and some of them were here the year before. Seventh mission means the seventh time here helping a multitude of people? A multitude of people. Okay. So we have a, mission, a team that is in Portland now, at Buffby and Mount Pleasant, mm -hmm. doctors and dentists, giving free medical and dental work. Okay. And then the team from Montefiore is in Kingston, working with the um, Sir John Golden Rehab Center. Is, the first time, is this the first time you're fitting someone with prosthetic, a prosthetic limb? Doc, Dr. Bartels, no, this, is, this is actually the first time we're fitting somebody with a 3D printed myoelectric prosthetic. Okay, lung. great. Very I know fast. what that is. So, to make what it sound <laughs> simple, okay, great. Um, a prosthesis is just a replacement for a missing limb. Yeah. And what we have here is a limb that actually is made not by hand and, and the traditional craftsmanship, but this is actually printed on a 3D printer, which is attached to a computer. So mm -hmm. it's just like printing a piece of mm -hmm. paper, except it prints in plastic. Yes. And then in order to really make it actuate, you have sensors on the muscles that sense the activity and then convert that into closing and opening the hand. So this is the first time we've created one of these particular mm -hmm. types of prosthetics, and I think it's the first time delivered here in Jamaica. Yeah. Dr. Chandel, how is this changing the game? I've seen these 3D printers work. They are phenomenal. And what they've been able to do with health is incredible at a relatively low price, not so? Right, right, because 3D printing is a very advancing technology. With 3D printing, in any area, you can just bring out, print out anything and use it. People, I just read in the news yesterday, some people are even trying to 3D print aircrafts and showing it in the models. No, no, thank so, you. No, so no. Th that's where 3D printing is going. Incredible. Yes. What will they think of next? <laughs> Felix, yes. you are the recipient of your friend. You say you're getting to know him better. His name yeah, is Robo. I really wanted to know this guy some more. Yeah. A whole lot more. I've got to spend a whole lot of time with him. How did you lose the limb, first of all? Yeah. I had a domestic dispute mm -hmm. with my 
system and then I was just there and my brother just come and start chopping. Mm -hmm. How long ago was it? Um, this was on the 14th of August 1994. Okay, so a good while. Yeah, so you, you got chill. used to life without the limb? Oh, um, yeah, for a while. So now you have to get used to yeah. life with yeah, the limb again? Yeah, that's why I got to spend a lot of time with him. Get him to know him better and he gets to know me better. Okay, can I ask you to hold the limb out a little bit? Harold, I don't know if you can get the shot. Move it over to this side for me. I want Harold to see the the um, attachments. So, Dr. Bartel, tell us about the, the what you call those things that we see on the arm. So, what you can see on the arm, yeah. on the bottom, are the sensors. Right, I'm going to put, okay, so, yeah, that's so what we're talking about. These are the sensors. Right. And what they do is they, when you squeeze your muscle, there's electrical activity. And it picks up that electrical activity and that turns it into motion. Wow. And there's one on both sides. There's one on the back side of his arm and one on the front. So right. if he wants to close the hand, he activates these. If he wants to open the hand, he activates the other muscles. But there's a lot of training. You have to learn how to control your muscles. And since Felix hasn't used his muscles for a long exactly time doing this, right. it's, it's as he said, he's going to have to learn to work with his friend to to make it work very smoothly. So, so that process would take that would be a lot of physio. Yeah, a fair amount. But it's going to be. I think he'll be doing a lot of it on his own because you'll just sit and you'll you'll practice. Mm -hmm. And it's practicing picking up things, releasing them, uh, using the hand as much as possible, and for as many activities as possible. So, Doctor Chandel, the notion is that he will be able to get so used to this that it will function as his regular limb used to. Yes, because uh, the again, the muscle sensors, they pick up the action potentials, which are transmitted to a circuit board. That circuit board is like a small computer, which is programmed, and it tells these fingers to move according to what his muscles are doing. Mm -hmm. So when his mind is trained with practice, he can pick up a thing, he can drink with a glass, mm -hmm. And he can do all this normal stuff, except for like bigger stuff. For that, you need a more stronger cords here. Okay. Yeah. This is life changing. Indeed. What did this cost? Can we talk about that? Um, well, Dr. Bartels can tell you that what a normal cost would be, but how much it cost them for this particular hand. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Bartels, you can tell you what the normal cost of a. Well, the normal cost for a myoelectric limb uh, that's traditionally made, not 3D printed, would be anywhere between. That the minimum ten thousand dollars up to thirty thousand U.S. dollars. Yeah. So it's not Jamaican dollars. Right. This this, one. this particular hand with all the components and the parts put together is in the range of three hundred to four hundred dollars. Incredible. Indeed. So this can bring the reach of these advanced technologies to many, many more people, which is why we're doing this. Yeah. And I also want to mention, we, we didn't do this all by ourselves, too. We had some foundation help as well in the United States. There's an Everest Foundation who actually helped to support Dr. Chandel and us to actually create this and has supported us in coming here as well. Yeah. So this is, a, as you said, this is a teamwork, Together multiple we stand. collaborations. Together we stand. This is fantastic. We have to go. Any final uh, Well, just want to say a big thank you to CJM Gallagher you know, my company that's helped to sponsor the program, to Island Car Rentals, to Jamaica Medical Foundation, and to J Jamaica Money Market Brokers Foundation. Thank you so much for the help. We really appreciate it. This is a great story. This, these are the stories that make you smile in the morning. Thank you all for being here. This is a fantastic partnership, and we hope you can continue to change more lives. 300 bucks, and you've got your hand back. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Professor yeah. and yeah. Chairman yeah. in the department. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't say it. High five. Yeah. High five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Department of Rehabilitative Medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Dr. Matthew Bartels, Director of Zion Care International, Camille Wilson, Physician Researcher, Bishar right. Chandel, and Amputee Felix Morris. Um, amputee no more, he's got his hand back. More on Smile on the other side of this break. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.